All right, everyone. Well, this is what you do on a 15 below morning here in Minnesota. I tell you, the last few weekends, we have had some really cold temperatures for the last few weeks straight, but especially on the weekends when a guy wants to be outside trying to get something done, 15 below, 20 below, 10 below. So what do you do? You hang out by a fire, sit in the shop, work on stuff. But today I wanted to walk you around my 2004 Yamaha Rhino I have. I've done a lot of custom stuff to it and never really thought of doing a video of it. And uh, the other day I was thinking, oh, what the heck, let's do a walk around on the uh, Rhino. So, so I'll step away from the fire for a few minutes and uh, we'll wander around my Yamaha 2004 Rhino and I'll talk about the stuff I've done to it. Man, that fire feels good. Here it is. You said it's a 2004. I'm gonna start at the front up here and we'll just kind of walk our way to the back. I've done a lot of little different things to it. Some of it's subtle, some of it's pretty obvious. But when I got it, the first thing I did was build a roll cage and stuff for it. And that was pretty involved because I wanted to get a back seat in it. So at the time, my two daughters were pretty young. And I wanted to be able to ride in the back and be able to sit in a seat and be safe with uh, a roll cage around them and stuff. But we really don't ride hard. I mean, honestly, the few times we did take it out riding, we just got on some pretty smooth trails and just kind of putted around along, enjoyed nature. You know, these machines, if you do a lot of modifying, yeah, they're fast then. I've done zero modification to increase the speed at all because that's really not what I'm looking for. I just wanted comfort, a good utility vehicle and something to deer hunt with and something to really plow my driveway and, and this machine has really done all that and so we'll just pull up the hood um, i already got it a jarred here because it's kind of a son of a gun to get this thing open and underneath the hood now you can see the original green it was but on the outside and i think it was just a couple years here with this green they're real no notorious for fading out and this one was it was kind of getting white in spots and I don't know if it was just the, the pigment and the, and the color or what it was, but I've seen a few of them for sale and they all seem to have that ghost white fading going on them. And this one definitely did. So the heater I put in it was actually a, you kind of see it right here. It was a Jeep heater. It was a universal fit Jeep heater. And I bought it through uh, full parts hardware. I believe they're in uh, Arizona or Texas, somewhere down south. It was like 250 bucks. Yeah, you can buy a direct fit Yamaha one at the tune of $500. But if you're uh, handy at all and capable of making things fit, $250, you got yourself a nice heater. Uh, I ducked, I ran one duct up to the dash and you can see right here where it's split, there's a hose going that way. Cause they give all this stuff with the ducts and the Y's and stuff. And then oh, right behind there, there's another hose going there. And I'll show you the vents here in a minute coming up on the dash. And then I ran one more duct down below down here, and I'll show you where that one goes. It's in a really good spot. So here's just kind of underneath the hood. I haven't done a ton underneath here, um, other than installed that heater, and it was already, I already had a winch and stuff on it when I got it, so somebody else already put all this winch stuff in it. It's got a wireless controller for it. I did just put a brand new battery in it. I've had it for four years now, and the guy, when I got it from him, said the battery's a year old, so put the battery at five years old. Just got that new one and the guy at the battery store actually said that that did pretty good for five years so the color i painted is like this flat green and, and flat black and that's uh this plasti paint uh, i don't know the technical terms of it but it's a paint you can spray on you don't have to prep the surface at all all i did was wipe it clean uh masked stuff off that i didn't want to get the paint on and painted it on there and you can actually take this paint if you don't want it no more grab a hold of the corner of it and peel it right off like a decal. It's pretty incredible. I haven't had to try to peel it off yet, but this has been like this for three years now. I painted this three years ago and it's held up really well through brush and, and everything else. So we're up around front up here. I do have a plow on it for plowing the snow. I did just put a synthetic rope on it. Um, yeah, I think the jury's still out on that rope. I'm not, I'm not gonna say I would recommend that quite yet. I've had problems with it already breaking. Maybe it's just my setup. It could be that, you know, that fair lead, and maybe it could be the brand of rope I bought. Um, but it, it's nice though. All you gotta do is just tie a new knot at the end when it does break. It's not like a cable where you gotta get the cable clamps and everything else out. But I don't know, I'm not overly impressed with it. 
I do have a small LED here on the bumper and I also have a larger one up on the windshield up here and uh, this year well, it would have been last fall we actually had to take a deer out of the woods after dark and uh, it was pretty awesome coming out of the woods I mean it was like daytime and even my dad had to comment uh, years ago when they used to take deer out of the woods he said usually you're holding a candle out in front of them with some kind of a reflector behind it and he says well man if we would have had these lights 30 40 years ago we would have been able to see our way out of the woods a whole lot better <laughs> so that was kind of neat I did put uh, light truck tires on it. You can see them here. Let me get down here. So you, it's a general grabber. Uh, right here, so it's, it's a 15 inch tire. And what I used was uh, 15 inch trailer wheels. Uh, the offset seemed to be pretty close of what I needed. And so what I did was I welded, can't really see because I welded them and ground them off pretty nice but it was a five bolt pattern. I welded all the holes shut, ground them off, and then I took the center hub of a Yamaha wheel with the bolt pattern, and I centered it up into this larger hole, and then used transfer punches and punched the, the bolt pattern onto my wheel, drilled them, chamfered them, put them on, they worked great. Uh, the only thing I had to do was in the back is I had to add a spacer. And it was an inch and a half spacer. You can kind of see back here. There's the spacer. So I added that uh, to line my tires up a little closer from front to rear. You can see they're really close now. But before I did that, the back was a lot narrower because the stock wheels have a different offset on them to compensate for the narrower front tires and the wider rear wheels, rear, rear tires. So the wheels are a little different. So by putting wheels on that were the same offset front and rear by using these trailer wheels, I had to put that spacer in the back. I built these doors because um, I wanted to enclose the whole thing. As you can see, I have an entire cab on it. So I built the doors from scratch out of, uh, I used plain steel con conduit diameter round tubing. That way I was able to use a conduit bender to bend all the bends. It just made things a little easier. So I'll just open up the door here. You can see, and I, and I mean, I went pretty simplified on my latch mechanism here. You can see it's just a, some rod, piece of spring in there. I mean, I built all this stuff. And so here's the look of the door on the inside. And I just sprayed some undercoating on the inside of the doors. And then the outside, and the metal's kind of an embossed metal, so it's got kind of a texture to it. And then I just sprayed that green on it again, too. And my local canvas guy made all the canvas for it. He made these just plastic covers to go on the top half and this actually comes off see if I can pull this off one handed here there so that comes off and then you basically just have a half door then so back in my jeeping days you know we always had soft tops on our jeeps and we could always take that top half of the door off and it really made it nice and the same canvas guy made this whole canvas top for me I built the cage first and then I brought it over to him. And he, the nice thing is, he's just right up the road. And uh, here, let me just unzip the sides here. <laughs> we'll pull one side up. So he added some zippers for me. I did all the snap work and stuff myself. And I, th I thought he did a pretty good job fitting this thing on there. I mean, it's kind of a unique, one of a kind deal. You don't see many of these rhinos with a full cab like this, you know, all the way out to the back. And this one has it. And it's kind of kind of neat. Uh, like I say, you don't see them too often. So let's take a peek on the inside. I did put a rear seat in it, like I said earlier, for my daughters to be able to ride in the back. Right now I got some John Deere weights laying in here for uh, snow plowing and stuff, a little extra weight in the back. Because when I'm plowing, I really honestly can use pretty much tool drive most of the time. These tires with this uh, siping and stuff that they have on them really work incredible. I got a lot of traction on the ice, snow and everything. I use them all the time. I use them even when we're deer hunting. I mean, there's a little bit of mud and stuff we got to go through, and this thing just crawls right through it. This, these tires are, I love them. I don't think they do as much damage uh, to the trails and stuff, and it gives me more ground clearance. I'm able to get through rutted areas a lot easier without having to spin. I can pretty much drive through everything, and uh, I, I really like them. And these doors also, these hinges I used, they're like a barrel hinge. You can, uh, you can lift the whole door off too if you want to take the door completely off. You can just pull the door right off. Just kind of a look on the inside here. Here's my heater switch. 
right there you got you know high low high low medium and high um, and here's one of the heat ducts coming right up on the dash right there and then there's another one over on the passenger side let me swing the door open and I'll show you that one I stuck down here it's right there is my other heat duct and that's where your foot is so it keeps your foot nice and warm that's why I strategically located it right there so I did put a center console in it just to hold maps and your coffee cup or whatever uh, other things whatever you might want to keep in there but uh, nothing too fancy on the inside um, like I said I, I mainly just use it for plowing the driveway a little bit of deer hunting and stuff I did put a big ginormous rear view mirror in it and it's nice I mean for when you're plowing you don't have to swing your head around as often you, you can actually see out behind you pretty pretty decently with it I did put big flares on it so I wanted to try and keep the mud and stuff off the side of if I'm going through a puddle or something and they really I mean you can see they cover the tire almost a hundred percent so you can go down a pretty wet trail and uh, have hardly any mud on it which is nice I'd rather just keep the mud underneath inside the fenders than all over the machine and I did add on to this rear bumper I built this part right here this tube that goes around the back you can see I kind of built it out to help protect that flare and then I brought that tube I'll come around to the other side that I have open you can see I brought this tube off of here let me unsnap this so I brought a tube off the back of the factory cage all the way around the back of the machine. So it goes around the rear of the seat to protect the back of the seat. And I have that other one up a little bit higher there too. And then this one comes off of there down to the bumper to kind of help tie all of this together. And I got some grab handles here for the kids to be able to hang on to the handle and stuff. But I honestly think this is way, way overbuilt for what I use it for. I mean. Like I said, we, the few times we just took it out putzing around. Um, but I don't mind overbuilding stuff. If it were to ever flip over, everybody would be able to get out of this thing and walk away with no problem. Um, you're kind of at the mercy of these when you're in them. If you're going up a hill and it wants to go over backwards, you're, you're in for the ride. As you can see, I got these little stubs coming out the back. What that for was I, I built a, a rack that's on pins so you could put a cooler in there uh, gas cans chainsaw any of that kind of stuff. I don't have it on there right now But I made it detachable so you could take it on and off easily enough if you're to Go clean trails out or whatever you're gonna do you can stick that rack on throw the chainsaw on there Loppers or or whatever it works really good. So it's not all on the inside of the Rhino so But yeah, I guess I don't have much else to really say about it. I mean Let me stand back so you can kind of get a nice view of it here some of my buddies said, eh, it kind of looks like a military assault vehicle, you know, with the boxed design like that, but that's eh, kind of neat. I'll turn the I'll turn the LED lights on here real quick. Let's see if I can get to the switch here. So there's just the the lower one on. You can hear the the heater running. So there's the lower LED. You get the upper one on here so there's the upper one I do have a couple bulbs out and it looks like this this one was one of those cheaper LEDs you can get offline yeah and I think you you pay for what you get there's no doubt about it so I have wired them right into my headlight switch so I wired the lower one on the low beam the upper one on the high beam and then if you just take the switch and you get it in between them you can actually get both LEDs on then at the same time and yeah, that it makes it bright. Definitely when it's dark out, you can see where you're going. You can turn it into daytime pretty easily. So here's that heater switch. You just there's your low and high. I've really found there's no other no other setting other than high. <laughs> so it's just because the the top does not fit the tightest. And uh, you know when it's cold out, I, it could be ten below out, and you can be in this thing in pretty much a sweatshirt and light gloves and plow the driveway with no problem and stay warm in it i mean you're not toasty in there but you'll stay warm you're not all bundled up with face mask and huge fluffy hat and all that boots and all that stuff i mean you can be pretty lightly dressed in there and stay warm in it and plow and get the job done so well my feet are starting to get cold from walking around the cold concrete so i think i'm gonna cozy up to my fireplace again here and stay warm for the rest of the day thanks guys